Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the credentials of three new ambassadors to Bahrain in a ceremony held at Sakhir Palace. The ambassador of Algeria, Abdul Hamid Ahmed Khoja, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was received by the Chief of Royal Protocols and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received the credentials of the Algerian ambassador and exchanged greetings with him, praising the bilateral relations and their development in all fields, and wished him success in his diplomatic tasks. The ambassador of Indonesia, R.D. Hermawan, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was received by the chief of royal protocols and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received the credentials of the Indonesian ambassador and exchanged greetings with him, praising the bilateral relations and their development in all fields and wished him success in his diplomatic tasks. The ambassador of the United States of America, Stephen Craig Bundy, arrived at Sakhir Palace, where he was received by the Chief of Royal Protocols and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received the credentials of the U.S. Ambassador and exchanged greetings with him, praising the bilateral relations and their development in all fields and wished him success in his diplomatic tasks. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their respective heads of state as well as their good wishes to His Majesty. They also wished the kingdom and its people for their progress and prosperity, praising the close bilateral ties with the kingdom at all levels. The ceremony was attended by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, the minister of the Royal Court, the minister of Foreign Affairs, and the chief of Royal Protocol. Calls.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the commander of the U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth F. Mackenzie Jr., on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the guests, expressing pride in the deep-rooted historic Bahrain-U.S. relations and the deep partnership that is based on long decades of trust, respect and coordination as friends and allies. His Majesty the King hailed the continuous advancement of relations between Bahrain and the U.S. in all fields in light of the mutual keenness on developing them, especially in military coordination and defense cooperation to achieve joint interests and goals. His Majesty hailed the U.S. administration's vital role and effective efforts in cooperation with the allied countries in establishing the pillars of security and stability in the region and strengthening international security and peace. He affirmed the kingdom's support for these regional and international efforts and endeavors, noting the efforts of General Mackenzie to develop Bahrain-U.S. cooperation in the military and defense fields. During the meeting, points of view on regional and international developments were exchanged. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 16 of the year 2022, appointing Mohammed Shawqi Abdul Latif Slis as Director of the General Sports Authority's Auditing Directorate. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, also issued Edict 17 of the year 2022, appointing the following directors at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. Manaf Ahmed Ali al Manai, Director of the Foreign Trade and Industrial Property Directorate. Khalid Ali Hussain Al Gallaf, Director of the Industrial Areas Directorate. Intisar Mahdi Ali Abdelhal, Director of the Consumer Protection Directorate. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the commander of the U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth F. McKenzie Jr. and an accompanying delegation at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of historic strategic bilateral ties between Bahrain and the United States, which continue to receive the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander. His Royal Highness commended the contribution of the U.S. and other allies in maintaining international security and stability. During the meeting, regional and international developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. His Highness Major Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. Based on the directives of Representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa to assist families affected by heavy rains, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, has provided financial support to the affected families. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for their support to Bahraini families. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed that the the RHF is keen on fulfilling the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and on implementing his directives in providing all forms of support to citizens. For his part, the RHF Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayyid hailed the directives to support the families affected by the recent heavy downpour, adding that the RHF has set up a link for online requests to receive support and that it received 880 applications. The relevant committee reviewed the applications submitted based on the RHF standards and requirements 
requirements. A list of the families eligible for assistance was drawn up and the amounts were transferred to bank accounts to contribute to addressing some of the damages to the homes. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa met at the BDF Officers Club with the Commander of the U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth F. McKenzie Jr. and his accompanying delegation in the presence of the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah Naimi. During the meeting, the BDF Commander-in-Chief welcomed the Commander hailing the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the U.S. and the development and growth they witness in all fields. He wished that the bilateral coordination cooperation would continue in various affairs, especially the military field. At the end of the meeting, the two sides exchanged commemorative gifts. The BDF Commander-in-Chief hosted a lunch banquet for the U.S. Commander and his delegation. The meeting was attended by the Director of the BDF General Command, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff for Human Resources, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Director of Planning, Organization and Technology, Major General Sheikh Salman bin Khalid Al Khalifa, Commander of Royal Bahraini Naval Forces, Rear Admiral Mohammed Yusuf Al Asam, Director of Military Cooperation, Major General Pilot Sheikh Mohammed Salman Al Khalifa, and a number of senior BDF officers. The Council of Representatives held its weekly session chaired by its speaker, Fozia Zainal. The Council approved the reports of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee on a decree by law amending some provisions of the Judicial Authority Law and a decree by law amending some provisions of evidence in civil and commercial matters law. The session approved the report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee on a draft law amending Article 1 of Law 28 of the year 2006 on the Future Generations Reserve. It also approved the report of the Services Committee regarding a draft law amending some provisions of the private educational and training institutions law. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, participated as a speaker in the discussion session arranged by the Atlantic Council held remotely as part of launching the Empowering the Middle East initiative with the participation of the UAE Minister of State for Entrepreneurship and Small and Medium Enterprises, the Jordanian Minister of Digital Economy and Entrepreneurship and the Egyptian Minister of International Cooperation. Zayani stressed that this discussion session is an important opportunity to highlight the efforts of governments in supporting entrepreneurs and expanding the scope of small and medium companies, noting in this regard that the government of Bahrain played a key role in supporting the entrepreneurship ecosystem and creating a business-friendly environment for startups and small and medium companies within Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 to be a leading center for startups. Within the framework of the Cabinet's announcements regarding the launch of the Golden Residency, which comes within the Economic Recovery Plan, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, affirmed that this announcement will contribute to enhancing the competitiveness of the Kingdom of Bahrain. He added that it supports development in various sectors, including the economic investments and services sectors. He also said that development plans in the nationality, passports and residence affairs, which are carried out with the follow-up and support of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin, Khalif, bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in a manner that enhances the investment environment in many areas and supports the national economy in accordance with the aspirations of the government and Bahrain Economic Vision 2030, in addition to strengthening the mechanisms of digital transformation. Sheikh Hisham affirmed that the Golden Residency is a quantum leap in enhancing the quality and efficiency of the services provided for residency in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Executive Office of the National Plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation, nation and reinforcing the values of patriotism at Bahrain expressed during a meeting in its pride in the support and guidance of the Minister of Interior, Chairman of the Follow-up Committee for the Implementation of Bahrain General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, towards uh, delivering Bahrain initiatives despite the challenges and precautionary measures imposed by the pandemic, which affirms the success of the activities and programs of the plan aim to strengthen national belonging and preparing a generation that believes in the values of patriotism and loyalty. The meeting of the executive office was virtually held with the participation of representatives of ministries and relevant stakeholders within the context of a following up on what has been implemented during the past period and reviewing the requirements for the next stage. 
reports on what has been accomplished in the first three years of the national, national plan and the impact achieved through the performance indicators set by each participating stakeholder are being compiled to issue an official report covering the first three years. And to speak more about the pivotal role of the national plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforce the values of patriotism, Bahrainuna, in the implementation of alternative sentences <coughs> and open prisons, we are we are pleased to be joined over the phone by the director of the executive office of Bahrainuna. Ms. Hala Ahmed Suleiman. Hello, Ms. Hala. The national plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforce the values of patriotism, Bahrainuna, reinforced Bahrain's efforts and strides in ensuring just practices in line with international human rights laws and charters. How does the implementation of alternative sentences and open prisons program relate to that? Certainly. Um, Bahrain has undergone over the last few years, transformative changes in its understanding and management of human rights issues. It has continuously developed and expanded these laws. Um, the recent announcement on expansion and development of the law on the open prisons is considered an important qualitative step towards including a system which allows for a variety of punishments, but provides space for criminal penalties commensurating with the age, health, gender, and personal circumstances of the sentence. The law also commensurates with the nature of the crime, strengthens ways of combating criminal offences and deters its perpetrators without prejudicing the rights of the victims. When we consider that such laws come in part of His Majesty the King's uh, vision and leadership and his direction to reform rather than just punish, um, the National Plan Bahrainana is the first official documentation of the Kingdom of Bahrain's national values. So human rights is certainly one of those 18 values. Alternative sentences and open prisons is a proof of the Kingdom of Bahrain's continuous efforts to ensure a just society and its continuous efforts to expand human rights best practices. In addition to the implementation of this law, uh, we have a number. We have 27 ministries participating. So the Ministry of Interior Initiatives, in conjunction with the Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs, are also creating awareness on this law and its effect. So it's a clear evidence of the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to human rights principles and practice. Both ministries are working on providing these sentences with opportunities to have a dignified second opportunity for those who may have been sentenced or convicted. Um, and their cases are looked by on a, on a uh, looking, you know, taking a number of criteria and uh, considerations and hence uh, providing them with their rights as humans before uh, any other aspect. Right. From your point of view, how do such laws and initiatives further contribute to strengthening social cohesion? Um, I think if you look at the amendments and the expansions and also the open prison, it basically includes more individuals under these laws. Um, after reviewing their social, economic and security aspects of their cases, and the legal conditions stated by the law. So, for example, some of the alternative um, sentences include community service, which means that they do have to come back and play a part in the community by serving the community, their village, their country. Um, they have to attend rehabilitation and training programs. So, in reality, it's actually giving them an opportunity to reform themselves and, again, uh, integrate within the society. At the same time, um, they're expected to remedy some of the damage that has resulted from their crime. So this um, basically serves two, uh, I consider, two main um, um, elements, community integration. So it takes them back into the community and both the public and private sector need to support um, the citizens. And also it allows family stability. So the sentenced um, individual or the convicted individual uh, is able to come back, uh, serve a sentence, a uh, 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 prison sentence. At the same time, he is with his family, so uh, it ensures family stability, um, and he is accepted once again as a citizen within the community. So this serves his human rights, and also it serves for him to come back and play a part as part of the society and to be reformed, to be um, a citizen um, and help in building Bahrain's future, uh, no matter what your situation is. 
Thank you so much for that elaboration. That was the director of the executive office of Bahrainuna, Ms. Hala Ahmed Sleiman. Thank you for joining us. And to speak about the updated isolation protocol for travelers entering Bahrain as well as positive cases and suspected COVID-19 cases, we are joined over the phone by the Director of Health Promotion at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Wafa Al-Sharbati. Hello, Dr. Wafa. Can you elaborate on the changes to the isolation protocol for travelers entering Bahrain as well as positive cases and suspected COVID-19 cases? Well, certainly. So travelers entering Bahrain uh, with green shield uh, are not required to quarantine anymore those with non-green shield um, are required to quarantine for seven days and of course all travelers will undergo pcr upon arrival only one test now regarding cases of covid 19 with the green shield they are required to, to quarantine for seven days and those with uh, non-green shield are quarantined for 10 days Regarding the contact of active cases, those with green shield are not required to quarantine, while those with non-green shield are required to quarantine for seven days on. Right. Thank you very much. That was the Director of Health Promotion at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Wafa Sharbati. Thank you for joining us.